everyone and welcome back to the Study Tube project. My name's Eloise and I study law at the University of York and I have a little Study Tube channel. Today I'm going to try to teach you a little bit of medical negligence law. So a little warning before we get started, this is medical negligence law, so some of the topics are going to involve sort of medical stuff and if you're sensitive to anything to do with that this might not be the best video to watch. That being said, I won't be going into any kind of graphic details so please don't worry too much. Okay, so the main thing that I want to get across in this video is how cool law can be because you get to read all of these cases and learn about all of these different stories. So I'm going to start off by describing the test that we're looking at and some of the key cases and then at the end I'm going to give you two chances to test yourselves. So I'm going to describe a case and you can try to work out whether there has been medical negligence or not. Okay, so let's get started. So we're talking about negligence, which is an area of law called tort law. So torts are things that you can do wrong, but without breaking the criminal law. If you break the criminal law, you might end up in prison. If you become liable in tort law, you might owe somebody else some money. The basic idea with negligence is that somebody is responsible for looking after somebody else and they fall below the standard that we expect. So there are four elements to becoming liable in negligence. You need a duty of care, you need to breach that duty of care, you need cause in fact and cause in law. So I'm going to break those down. The first element is that there needs to be a duty of care. Now this just means that somebody is responsible for looking after somebody else. You won't have to worry about the duty of care too much in this video because we're talking about doctors and patients and there's always a responsibility for a doctor to look after their patient. So the next element is a breach in that duty of care and that means that somebody doesn't measure up to what we expect of somebody who has that duty. So it would mean that you were being a bad doctor. So the key case in breach of duty of care is one called Bolan and it's from 1957. So in Bolan somebody was in a psychiatric hospital and his doctor decided that he needed electroconvulsive therapy to try to make him better. Now, electroconvulsive therapy can make somebody make jerky movements, and that can be quite dangerous. Now, in the 50s, there was sort of a divide among the medical profession. Some doctors would sedate their patients before electroconvulsive therapy, some doctors would restrain them physically, and some wouldn't do either. So Bolam has this um, therapy, and in the course of it, he's not restrained, and he suffers a hip fracture. And then he says, well, I wasn't warned of the risk of my hip fracture and frankly I think it was a bit negligent of you not to restrain me, I really wasn't expecting to get a hip fracture. So the question was, has the doctor broken his duty of care? Do we expect more from responsible doctors than this? And the test that emerged was that a doctor isn't liable in negligence if they've followed a responsible body of medical opinion. That means that a judge isn't entitled to sit there and say, I think these doctors do this better than these doctors. If there's um, a conflict in opinion, then as long as you're following a body of medical opinion, you're not liable. What this means in practice is that if you can get a doctor to stand up in court and say, I would have done this, actually, I think this is a responsible medical thing to do, then you've not broken your duty of care. So the next part of negligence is cause in fact. And cause in fact is just what you think of when I say causation. So did this thing cause this thing? And the terminology that we use in law is but for causation. So, but for this person doing this, I wouldn't have suffered the harm. So for example, but for the doctor failing to spot the infection, I wouldn't have got seriously ill. And then the final element is cause in law. Now cause in law is a bit sort of artificial and legal, but it turns on this concept of foreseeability. And foreseeability just means when the doctor did this, they should have realised that this other thing was going to happen. Now the key case in this area is um, a shipping case called the Wagon Mound. And in this case, a ship dumped a whole load of oil into a harbour. And the oil spilled all over the harbour, next to lots of other boats, next to the dock. And it just so happened that there was some cotton floating on the sea at the same time. And one of the other boats that was in the harbour was having some work done on it, and there were some welders. And when you're welding a ship, there are metal sparks. These metal sparks fell onto the cotton, which ignited and lit all of the oil on fire. And the whole harbour went up in flames. Ships burnt down, the dock burnt down, carnage. Now obviously people wanted their money back and the court had to consider what the test was for if something really unlikely happens. And basically the test is that if the reasonable person would reasonably foresee the type of damage, then cause in law has been satisfied. So you don't have to be able to see the full extent of everything that could happen, but if that type of damage was likely to happen, then you're liable in negligence. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So duty of care, don't worry too much about it. Breach of duty falls below the standard of any reasonable body of medical opinion. Cause in fact, which is just, did it cause the other thing? And then cause in law, was it foreseeable? 
So in the second half of this video, I'm going to present to you the facts of some real cases. We're going to do two cases, and I'm going to give you a second to pause the video so you can try to figure out whether there's been medical negligence in the case or not. So, in the first case, a man turns up in A&E and he complains that he has really bad stomach pain. He's just drunk some tea and um, the sickness has come on since then. And when he turns up, the receptionist phones the doctor and the doctor says, I'm busy, I'm not interested, tell him to go away. So the man goes home and really shortly afterwards he sadly dies. Now, the complicating factor in this case is that they look into what happened afterwards and they find out that the tea that the man drank had been poisoned with arsenic. And the thing with that stage of arsenic poisoning was that even if the doctor had come down and looked at him, there would have been nothing that he could have done. It was too late. So what do you think? Has there been medical negligence? I'll give you a second to try to figure it out. So these are the facts from a case called Barnet, which was heard in 1967. So running through it, yes, there was a duty of care because this man had turned up in A&E and was under the responsibility of the doctors. Um, yes, there was a breach of the duty of care because nobody's going to stand up in court and say, you know what, I wouldn't inspect people that had really severe st stomach pain. I'd tell them to go away as well. But the issue was the cause in fact, because yes, the doctor failed to examine him, but this man was going to die anyway, so but for the negligence, the harm would still have occurred. So it was held in this case that there hadn't been medical negligence. Okay, we're going to do one more. This one's slightly more complicated, but don't worry, I'll talk you through it afterwards. So a mother turns up to hospital with her child who is a toddler, and this child is having difficulties breathing. So the hospital assign a nurse to watch over the child constantly to make sure that nothing gets worse. And throughout the time that the child is in hospital, he has these episodes. So he'll have sort of five minutes where he's really struggling to breathe. Now this happens a couple of times, and each time that it happens, the nurse goes to her superiors and says, hey, I think somebody should come and look at this child. And each time it happens, the doctor says, yeah, okay, I'll come and examine the child in a little bit. And eventually the child has a really severe episode and comes to some quite serious harm. Now the issue in this case is that the doctor comes to court and says, I don't think there was anything I could do. Even if I'd turned up and examined him, I wouldn't have intubated him, so supported his breathing, because I think he was too young for that. So I'll give you a minute, what do you think? These facts come from a case called Belitho, which was heard in 1997. As we've talked about before, yes, there's a duty of care because this child was under the supervision of the doctors. Yes, there's been a breach of duty of care because you'd struggle to get a doctor to stand up in court and say, if a child was struggling, struggling to breathe, I wouldn't bother going to examine him. But the issue again is with cause in fact. And what they decided in this case was that you have to ask two questions. So firstly, you have to say, what would the doctor actually have done? And then you have to say, would that have been negligent? So here the doctor said, I wouldn't have intubated the child. If that would have been a negligent thing to do anyway, so if every other doctor would have said, no, you should have intubated that child, then you're liable in negligence. But if what you would have done wouldn't have been negligent and you wouldn't have been able to prevent the harm, then you're not liable in negligence. So in this case, the doctor says, I wouldn't have intubated the child. Several other doctors stand up in court and say, yeah, actually, that's not a negligent thing to do. I wouldn't have intubated a child that young either. And then she's not liable in negligence. The practice that she would have adopted wouldn't have been negligent and the harm therefore couldn't have been avoided. I hope that makes sense. How did you do? I'd be really interested to hear in the comments. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, thank you so much for watching and um, I'm sure somebody will be back with another video on this channel really soon. Bye!